Welcome, it's Drifter Manex here, and this is my Dynamite Temperature Recording System Review. New product uh, out on the market. Um, it's a temperature recording system that covers five different channels, so you can cover things. This is my uh, Armour Typhon. Uh, brushless motor on here, you can put temperature sensor on that, temperature sensor on USC, temperature sensor on a couple of battery packs, etc. Just to see how hot your car is getting. How does this differ over a traditional temperature gun? Well, this tells you the minimum and the maximum temperatures for all five of those channels that you can scan through using the uh, the buttons on here. But I'll get a box open and we'll have a look at it in a minute. Fully waterproof, one year warranty, which is great. Available from Horizon Hobbies, but do like me, buy it through your local hobby store. Why use this over a traditional temperature gun? Well, by the time you've done a high speed run, you've slowed the car down, you brought it towards you, you've got all the body clips off, the thing's already had 30 seconds of cooling down. You're not getting a true maximum temperature. Hopefully, this should provide that true maximum temperature. It's becoming increasingly important to look at the temperatures on your RC car, on things like the motor and the ESC, uh, to make sure that you're not frying components out, to make sure your batteries aren't overheating, etc. As everything's going brushless, as the power levels are going up, Temperature is going to be key in the longevity of your RC car. So let's get a box open. Okay, so here's what we get for our money having uh, unpacked it. Uh, we get the five separate temperature sensors and a power lead up here which clearly connects uh, to your receiver. Now, I've got a slight issue here is that I plastered it in my receiver. I may have my typhoon, so I'm going to have to dig uh, that out to get access so we can get power to this, but I'll do that off camera, obviously. The little... Uh, temperature sensor uh, recording device here itself we've got channels A and then channels 1, 2, 3, 4 on there uh, we've got a line out and a line in I'm assuming the line in is for power but I'm going to read the instructions before doing that we've got two buttons channel select and C backslash F which I'm assuming is uh, channel function uh, on there and our little LCD display I'm going to go and plug this into the receiver uh, of one of my other cars just so I can uh, test this uh, for tonight and just show the, the backlit uh, light on there. Okay, so the temperature leads themselves. Uh, I would suggest this thing is approximately 10 inches long. Um, it doesn't come with any kind of self adhesive pad or anything to fit the temperature sensor. Just going to bring that up close to the uh, camera there. There's no self adhesive pad or anything on there. Going to need to read the instructions as to how to attach this uh, onto the uh, the motor can and the ESC etc. Particularly when you're putting it on something of very high temperature, guess how we're going to fix this on uh, could be key. Okay, before we get going, you're going to need to plug your temperature sensors in. Uh, they're obviously a two-sided thing. You've got the two little pins showing on this side, smooth on the other side. Uh, looking at it from left to right, the two little sides with the pins go in and push snugly home. You don't want to be putting them in with this side facing to the left. Two pins out to the left. So, I'm going to put the others in, get it powered up. Well, got all five uh, leads in there. I would strongly advise you do this before you put the thing in the car. Um, they should just push in there nice and gently. They have a slightly wedged look and feel to them. Some of them seem slightly tight, but you don't want to be putting excessive pressure on there to get them in at all. So now, why have we got line in and line out for the power? Well, just discovered obviously if you've got three channel receiver and you're taking the power feed for this and you might have been using that power feed for some lights or something extra, well particularly lights on there uh, is the most likely. So what you're going to need to do is take the power from your receiver into this and you then take your light feed out from the line out. That is what I'm guessing. It is non-specific in the instructions whatsoever as to that, so that is just my best guess. Power in from your receiver here, and then you'll take your external feed out to see if you've got some LED running lights on your car, etc. Because you can use this pretty much on anything. So, same thing again, pins to the uh, facing out to left, and uh, there we are, all set to go. Yep. Now, temperature sensors. I've read the instructions, and there is absolutely no mention whatsoever 
as to how to fasten these uh, to your car. If you're going to use glue, not an issue because you can you can buy these and you can get extra ones. So you can just say fit a set of five to each car and just plug and play with the device. However, not every glue is going to withstand the heat uh, of say sitting on a motor can uh, and could uh, just melt and in a sense it's just going to pull away. So I'm going to need some careful thought on the glue. Likewise, you put tape around the thing and your motor re can reaches like 150 degrees C. Tape's just going to melt all over the place. So, the display goes out. The back of the display, as soon as you press the buttons, uh, is actually uh, pretty damn bright. Just trying to keep this out of the light above here. Uh, you, you can scan through the channels and see the maximum and minimum temperature readings just by pressing this button we've got channel A, channel 1, channel 2, channel 3, channel 4 and back to channel A again so you can see everything on that and this is pretty bright display I think even in bright sunlight you're going to be able to see this thing uh, on the top of your RC car, boat, plane the, by the way this will go on, I've shown this on RC cars this will fit on anything uh, RC related where you've got a uh, temperature issue in hand so I said got all five of our sensors plugged in here uh, we've got power coming in on the uh, line inside. If you want to take a feed for your lights, say on your RC car, which you would have had in your auxiliary port, you can take it from the line output on here and feed it back to your lights, so they're still going to work. So this is not really getting in the way of everything. Despite what one of the magazines said, this this is pretty damn small for what it does. Um, I guess it's what, it's what, three, four grams, something like that? You've not got a big weight issue here whatsoever, or size issue. Uh, well... To anyone in all parts of the world thinking about buying this, what does the CF button stand for? Oh, duh. Centigrade and Fahrenheit. Idiot. Duh. Uh, you just press this uh, to change between centigrade and Fahrenheit on the minimum uh, and maximum temperatures on there. Doesn't stand for anything complicated like I thought it did. Duh. Anyway, show the good and the bad of these things. Anyway, you want to reset the thing, you hold down the channel select button for three seconds and now everything is zeroed in terms of maximum and minimum temperatures it's good to go good to record at this point put it on board my armor typhon let's go outside have some fun well nearly ready to do the test uh, I've got my uh, dynamite uh, temperature recording system in place here I've just put a double sided sticky tape on it stuck it to the top of the receiver box a bit push for room on here um, Centers, where am I going to put these? What am I going to stick them on with? Well, two of them I'm just going to push under either end of the uh, the battery here under these Velcro straps just to hold them down. Um, only things I'm interested in here, battery temp, motor can temp and the ESC temp. Uh, so for the motor can and the ESC, I'm just going to simply take these down for the minute. Not really wanting to glue them on there permanently and we'll see how we get on. Not convinced that any kind of glue isn't just going to melt off with the heat that uh, both of these things would generate anyway. So. I'll stick them on, back in a minute. Well, as you can see with my wearing master glass here, uh, it's nearly ready to go. I've actually put uh, two uh, of the temp sensors on the ESC, uh, one on this side and one just down through a little hole I found in here, just on the inside of the ESC. Uh, maybe get to see out of the thin, see how warm that is. Just use tape to hold it on the motor here. Uh, I'm just hoping these temps don't become so excessive my tape melts the hell and back uh, and just put these down on the top of the battery just to stop them uh, pulling out if there's any shaking around with a moment on there so moment of truth uh, pair everything up get the lid on and uh, let's go record some temperatures well as I'm in America I've got it all set on Fahrenheit but you can switch between Celsius and Fahrenheit with the right hand button uh, now I'm going to zero all the temperatures by holding the left hand button down the channel button for three seconds which should zero everything okay so going to get the body on Get outside and uh, get tested. Okay, just going to scan through the first two channels, channel A and channel 1, are the battery temperatures. So we can see on there, we've got 88 degrees and 91 as the maximum. And on the back of the battery, we've got 87 and 90 as the maximum. Okay, scanning on through channel 2, that was the temperature sensor on the motor can. Uh, so there we've got uh, 109, just under 110. Uh, maximum 88 minimum okay so what do I love about the uh, dynamite uh, temperature recording system it is child's play to use um, putting the sensors in place can be 
slightly tricky and you're going to need to use a bit of imagination as uh, there are no instructions uh, given in the instructions whatsoever as to how to attach the temperature sensors and certainly when it comes to a motor can, uh, not so easy. Maybe the tape might melt if the thing got red hot, who knows. Um, the device itself, very, very easy to use. Um, I do have a high level of confidence in this being uh, correct and certainly by the time you pull the lid off, taking the temperature of the SC, temperature of the motor, temperature of the battery with the heat gun, uh, who knows, I very much doubt any of them would be correct. With this thing, it's, it's getting the maximum temperature on there, which is what we're all really after. If you did enjoy the review, then please do uh, share with friends, and by all means, subscribe for more great videos like this. Thanks for watching. Thanks for watching. I hope you liked this video. If you did, then please do like, and by all means, subscribe.